Hey everybody, this is Jason Akers with Green Acres Pest Control, and I'm live, and I haven't been live for a long time. Usually, I will give a, you know, 30-minute warning or an hour warning or whatever. Hey, I'm going live. We're going to talk about some bugs today, and uh, usually it's over the weekend. Um, but I've had a lot of issues with my cell provider. Okay, so I, for those that don't know what I do for a living, I do pest control, and I do uh, statewide bed bug control. I go all over the state of Virginia, no matter how far, and I deal with bed bugs. And usually on the weekends that I do these bed bug services, I will do a live stream, and I will answer questions from you guys, my audience. And I will answer questions about bed bugs or termites or ants, all kinds of things. You can go back through and look at all my live streams. Um, like today, I'm live streaming. I'm actually using my Wi-Fi signal locally um, because I haven't been able to do live streams. Whenever I try to do a live stream, hey, Kathy, whenever I try to do a live stream, and this is going to be a gripe video, but I thought it would be better to do a live stream. Um, <coughs> I just thought it would be better. So let me explain what has happened. My cell provider is U.S. Cellular. A lot of people don't know who they are because they're not Verizon. They're not AT&T. They're not AT&T. They're not, uh, you know, some large, huge conglomerate corporation. They're local to, uh, like, North Carolina, Virginia, West Virginia, this general area where I live. And I damaged my iPad. And... So I dropped it and it broke the screen. And because I have Apple Care, I have to send it in. I have to get it fixed. That's the way I do all of my payments. That's the way, like if someone hires me out and they do credit or something, I always swipe a card with it. And that's how I do business. This week, I have had a horrible time with accepting like credit payments and uh, just anything requiring an internet connection with my cell phone, which is what I'm talking to you guys on right now. Um and it's been really frustrating. Come to find out that my cell provider has changed their contract. Now, this is why I don't like contracts. It's why I don't do contracts on my own business. I don't require people to sign a contract in order to hire me. I think that if people are not satisfied with my service, they shouldn't have to stay with me or feel obligated or feel like they're trapped behind a paywall in order to leave my business, like cell phone companies. And this is what this video is about. This video is going to be about customer service or customer no service. What do you get with a contract? What are you going to get? What are you going to receive when you go and you sign the dotted line? Are, are they actually going to stand by what they promised you? <laughs> Kathy. Uh, but anyway... So what what has happened is my cell provider has given me a free gigabyte of roaming data, which is so generous. But after one gigabyte of roaming data is used, they cut you off. Doesn't matter if you pay. If you're roaming, you get no data. If you can't see their tower, you get no data. It doesn't matter if you get a cell signal and you are piggybacking off of Verizon or somebody like that. You get no data at all. <sighs> That's like saying if I come to your house and I'm spraying for bed bugs and it takes me an hour and I need an hour and 10 minutes and I decide, oh, well, hour's up. I'm leaving. Screw the 10 minutes. You guys are just done. I don't have to do that bed. I don't have to do that sofa because, well, you know, you only paid for an hour. <laughs> Sorry. And I just leave without finishing the job that I agreed to do. Um, I think that's ridiculous. I think that peeved. Like, I don't understand what has happened to the world today that we live in where people can't just give a person what they pay for. Customer service or customer no service. Customer no service is in every single profession. 
It's not just in pest control. Oh yeah, Kathy. Same with haircuts. I can't do half one, one side. I, I, I <laughs> yeah. I'm only going to cut half of your head. I'm not going to cut it all because, well, you know, uh, you you've been sitting here talking to the barber for 20 minutes because that's all they ever do, and I just didn't have time. Sorry, you know. But um, yeah. I the biggest issue with me is I don't know. I just. <clears throat> Right. When you pay for unlimited and you pay extra for unlimited and you pay a lot of money for unlimited service, I'm paying 300, almost $350 a month for my cell plan. I have now my personal cell phones and stuff. I don't care if I go over my data limit. It's not a big deal. It's personal cell phone. I'm not using it for business, but my business line is the way that I make a living. So I'm, I have to be able to accept payments. I have to be able to accept uh, charges from credit cards and stuff like that. I have to be able to do that. And because all because my iPad is in the shop getting worked on. And so I use my cell phone just right here as a backup. They've decided, well, because I've, I've used my cell phone for data and stuff. I might listen to a podcast or watch a YouTube video or let my kids play a Pokemon go, or I play Pokemon go. But, um, if if I were to do something like that on my phone and use that one gig of data, well, I'm just screwed the rest of the month. I can't take any charges. I can't do anything with business at all. If somebody sends me a picture message and they want me to identify like a cockroach or an ant or something, I can't even receive a picture unless I can hit a U.S. cellular tower. Or get on Wi-Fi. Right. They expect me to just use my own Wi-Fi service that I pay for rather than their cell service that I pay for. So anyway, this just, like I said, it's a great video. I told you as sailor I was going to do one and release it to you guys so you guys could all see and share it and like it and pass it around and uh, give, recommendations <laughs> give recommendations on who's good. Well, I'm, I'm considering moving to Verizon anyway, and I hate to say that. <sighs> I hate Verizon. I have never liked Verizon. I can't stand their company. I, I can't stand their landline service. I can't stand their uh, anything about them. I, I, I hate them. But at least I know they're they're the way they are. So <laughs> I'm gonna have to switch to them because that's the only other option I've got locally anyway. So anyway. Anybody got any questions? Because I am here. I'm live. I haven't been live in a long time. You see, that's that's the thing that bothers me because on the weekends, I like to do live shows. I like to get on in the evenings and talk to people and ask, answer people's questions. I actually enjoy doing that when I'm out of town. And I have not been able to do that. And I could not figure out why my cell service wasn't working. I could not figure it out. And now, because I've had to send my iPad in and get work done to it, I completely understand why it doesn't work. Chris, how's it going, boss man? Sorry about the... I was looking around for more. Oh, yeah, it's no big deal. <coughs> but, yeah, it's it's really important for me to be able to help sell service all over Virginia. If anybody calls me anywhere, I, I need to be able to go do it. You know, if I if I get a call from D.C. and I have to drive up there for bed bug service or something, I need to be able to get up there. I need to be able to use a service there, too. And see, that's what's happening when I get to D.C., even though U.S. Cellular has um, contracts with like Verizon and AT&T and stuff to use their towers. They don't have the same kind of contract with data. And so when I get up to to uh, D.C. area where there's no U.S. Cellular tower, I can't hit that tower. I'm not able to do my live streams at all. So I can't come on here and talk to anybody or anything. Um, guarantee I live more in the sticks than you. Oh yeah, you, you probably do because I live in the city now. Um, but, uh, one of the issues I have is, is if I get out to like Palmyra, which is way on out in, uh, I don't even think that's considered Albemarle County anymore, but that's to the, uh, east of Charlottesville about 30 minutes or so, maybe, maybe 40 minutes. And I don't get any service out there, but Verizon does work out there. I know that for a fact because people who live out there, they have Verizon. It says the only service they can get. But um, hopefully, once I switch carriers, once I get my iPad back, because my iPad's actually out for service, as soon as I get that thing back from Apple, I'll be uh, 
probably doing more live streams on the weekends when I travel and stuff. Cause that's really the only time I have to do live streams is on the weekends when I travel. So anyway, like I said, if there's any questions about killing bugs or anything like that, you guys are more than, more than, uh, willing to, or more than, more than what's the word I'm looking for. I'm more than happy to answer your questions. If there's any questions, has have you guys been noticing uh, or watching my videos lately? I've been doing uh, vacation stuff, uh, trying to teach people about uh, how to avoid getting bed bugs on vacation. I don't know if anybody liked that or not. It's a good time to to ask people if you are enjoying that. I uh, I had a whole long list of videos I needed to do, but I just hadn't had the time to do them yet. I've got one releasing tomorrow. Um, that I haven't, I usually tweet out my videos in advance. People know when they're coming out. I got one coming out tomorrow, I think at 10 o'clock in the morning, um, about bed bugs too. Um, I can't remember what that one's about, but we will see. It's been watching. I'm here. Can you see this? Yeah, I can see. I can see my live streams. I can see it. I'm doing it on my phone. And so like right over here, my finger is that's where the chat comes up it just it disappears quick so i gotta read it quick heard an interesting thing about carpenter bees i heard treat a whole the thing about carpenter bees is they drill well they pretty much are done drilling now you might see a random one here and there they drill in the spring from like march until like early june but usually like late may and that's it but they're drilling to lay eggs. The eggs uh, just stay inside the wood, and then they hatch out, and they drill. They'll drill new holes to get out. They don't have to, you know, you can patch the hole and uh, seal them up in there. They get back out. They find their way back out. But thank you, Jessica. Uh, Jessica says I'm awesome. You tell my wife that. But anyway, uh, she knows I'm awesome. I know I'm awesome. I am awesome. No. <laughs> but, um when the when the carpenter bees will drill their way out now you can use pesticide that will last for 90 days in the holes like a dust or something like that but um the problem with carpenter bees is uh, some people will get me to do twice a, twice a year service oh we just trapped five skunks two big ones and three babies last skunk i did i got sprayed i hate skunks but um but anyway the uh they come out in the fall and so when the carpenter bees emerge they can emerge anywhere from july to like december and it's really hard to pinpoint the um, how long it takes them to gestate how long they come out so i always go in and treat the holes in the spring and just come back next year and treat them again and that way you get the offspring when they come back and usually two maybe three years tops and the carpenter bees are gone so it's just like a once a year thing. It's not like a regular occurrence, but my regular customers, you know, if I'm doing something like a regular monthly pest control or even quarterly pest control, I just kill the carpenter bees when I'm there. So I don't have to charge any extra for a carpenter bee job, but I try to give people their money's worth. If they're paying for me to come out to their house and putting up with me, they deserve their money's worth. <coughs> Get positioned better on the couch so I can be comfortable. Yeah, I'm looking rough today. Yeah, the carpenter bee traps are pretty cool. I've seen those. They work some. They still get bees drilling the house and stuff, but they do catch carpenter bees. <laughs> I started watching your videos when we got a bed bug infestation. Let's call it a year of a parasitic insect. Airbnb. Oh, no. Don't disappear on me, chat. How do I get that back? Okay. Hide. Super chat. Top chat. Well, I don't know how to keep my chat on, man. People want to talk to me, and then I can't see it. Can you bring up my chat? Because then you can read me stuff if, I, if, if stuff flies by. I don't know how to do it. I'm new to this YouTube thing. I've only been doing it for three years. Oh, now we have fleas. Alpine WSG works good for fleas. That's what I use. That's what I kill them with. You got to go to my channel. Yeah, go to my channel and look it up. I got to stay looking at the screen, though, because people YouTube? talk. Oh, is it YouTube? Yes. It's not Facebook. Oh, so oh no, I'm on YouTube. Okay. I actually thought I might do a Facebook Live, too, because that's local. Okay. okay, have you heard about Apprehend for bed bugs? I would like to try Apprehend, honestly. 
I have not used it, but Alpine is, I mean, not Alpine, I'm sorry, Apprehend. Apprehend is, uh, it's so specialized. If you watch the, like, go to Apprehend's website and watch the videos they have, and they're really, they're not very good salespeople when it comes to selling their product. They're like, you have to use it this way. And if you don't use it this way, you're going to screw up the whole job. And that's like a $120 bottle of Apprehend if it doesn't work. It's like, damn, I misapplied or something. But the the one of the big Apprehend, and the reason I have not used Apprehend yet, Crossfire still works. And Crossfire is a lot less intrusive. So you don't have to do so much tearing apart the house in order to kill the bed bugs because crossfire is non-repellent a version where the bed where the bugs will actually avoid the chemical and uh they're going to naturally want to be attracted to you anyway you can treat the mattress and so you might as well just treat the mattress i mean i know you could treat the band of the mat not reconnecting no, <coughs> here we go i need to <laughs> excuse me yeah. No, no, you read the label. I'm live. They can hear me. But um, but she was mentioning about fleas and getting rid of fleas, and the way you kill fleas is okay. Frontline. Um, what I use is I I've never heard of pyrethrin resistant fleas at all. I've never had a problem with fleas being resistant to pyrethrins, but or, or not pyrethrins, but synthetic pyrethroids. But um, what I use is Alpine. It's not a pyrethrin anyway. And you, uh, tr I think it's 30 grams a gallon. I think I'd have to read the label because I always have to read the label when I do fleas. I don't do a lot of flea jobs, but um, I always have to read the label. But you, you mix your tank. And then you spray the whole floor. You have to actually surface treat the floor. Pets have to be out of the house until it's dry, usually like three to five hours. Uh, people have to be out of the house for three to five hours. You pick up, like I pick up uh, floor rugs, like if there's like an area rug or something like that, you pick it up off the floor, you treat underneath the carpet, you treat on the top of the carpet, you know, you, you lay it back down and treat the top too. Uh, bath mats, um, welcome mats, all that stuff. You have to pick all that stuff up, treat underneath it. Uh, I usually get the customer to pick up everything out of the floor. So there's not any kids toys or anything like that around clothing and stuff has to be up or you can't treat. But, um, so basically what I do for a flea job, I used to back in the day, long, long time ago, probably 20 plus years ago, I used to treat the whole floor and then I'd come through with a fogger and I would actually fog, do a space spray and fog and the fog will kill any live fleas. But that's when we were doing more of a pyrethroid type treatment. But when you're using something like Alpine WSG and it's a neonicotinoid, it reacts, it, the fleas react differently to the chemical. And so you're going to get a quick knockdown anyway, because it's just a really, really good chemical. And so I treat the whole floor with that. But that's expensive. I mean, Alpine is like $180. And um, with a lot of times you can get an exterminator to do it cheaper than that. And so that's why usually I recommend, it depends on the pricing in your area, but um, usually I recommend a, a pest control technician, especially their work. It's better to get them to do it than to do it. Try to do fleas yourself because fleas, like I said, it is a lot to have to cover. Like I'm looking at my house now, it'd probably take me 20, 30 minutes to do my house. Um, and I've only got like 1700 square feet. So it's not a lot of space, but it's, it's, a, it's, it's a lot to have to, you know, you're already having to clean up everything anyway. Um, do I do mosquitoes? Now that's a good question because in Virginia, it's illegal to kill mosquitoes unless you have, do I have my book over there? Let me show you this book. Let me take you over here and show you this book. There's wood destroying. Uh, actually, this will be a good, this will be a good way. For me to show you guys exactly what it takes to be an exterminator in the state of Virginia to do what I do. This is the core manual. That's the core. This is, this is to take your test. 
All right. Yep. Category eight. This is the core manual. This is general pest control. That's about half a size of a core manual. That's what I do in your home. If I come in your house, uh, this is the public health book. This is as thick as the core manual. This is huge. This is a big book. I just ordered that because I have to add that to my license. This is your wood destroying right there. Just to give you an idea, that's that's all, all the information. That's what I have to know to have a license to operate as a pest control technician in the state of Virginia. That's all the stuff I have to do. Um, the health book, I'm going to tell this, I'm going to tell you, say how it is right now. The health section of my license is bullshit. And I say that, I don't cuss very often, but I think it's ridiculous that I've been killing mosquitoes in people's yards since I was 17 years old. And all of a sudden, it is illegal for me to kill mosquitoes in somebody's yard. Um, it's it, Mosquitoes, one, carry malaria. They carry West Nile virus. They carry bird flu. They carry lots of diseases that you do not want to catch from a mosquito. Not to mention they're the most one of the most annoying things you can have in your yard. And your customer calls you up and they're like, hey, I'm ready to do my mosquito treatment this year. And you have to tell them, I can't do it anymore. It's illegal. Until I pass this section, Category 8, of my license, I'm not allowed to treat for mosquitoes, which I have done every year since I was a teenager. Tw over 20 years, I've killed mosquitoes for people. Ticks, you can't do ticks either. Ticks are considered public health too. So I can't spray yards for ticks and people get Lyme's disease. My aunt had Lyme's disease. Yeah, it, it is absolutely insane. It's just another way to get another license fee out of you in the state of Virginia. And I'm completely against it, but I have to do it because I got people that want me to do it. But yeah, I have a nuisance wildlife. Uh, I've got that too. I've got the permit for that too, Chris. And uh, that was actually... I actually really enjoyed that that's not a very big license fee either and i actually enjoyed taking that test but um i don't know this is this is so much it's i'm looking at it and i'm just like i wonder if i can just treat people's yard for ants and just if the mosquitoes die they die oh uh, you know i mean i i, I could have i was just spraying for ants and so the mosquitoes died so what you know that's actually what they told me when i talked to the guy but uh anyway i won't go into it so <laughs> But it, it's frustrating. It really is very, very frustrating because uh, I hate mosquitoes. And I mean, the, the guy said, like, yeah, if you're treating up around the house, like in the bushes and stuff around the eaves and everything like that, and you kill mosquitoes, that's fine. That's legal. But if you go out and you start treating the yard and you're killing mosquitoes in the grass, oh, those, we've got to protect those. you got to have a license for those. Yeah, license to kill. Uh, you know, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's the world we live in. But you got to do what you got to do. So. It's, I'm sure there'll be some interesting stuff in this book, and there's my son. So, well, I'm going to call this a wrap anyway. My main reason I wanted to do this video was to complain at U.S. Cellular and send them this video so they could see it, and they could see all the people that watch me and know that I'm peeved. So, you guys have a real great day. I appreciate it. And uh, I got a video coming out tomorrow about bed bugs. Can't remember what it's about. Oh, I know what it's about. The bed bug video I've got coming live tomorrow, or is going to be, it's not a live stream, but it's video for tomorrow. It's about why you're having problems getting rid of bed bugs yourself. And it's the top three reasons why you're having problems getting rid of bed bugs yourself. And it includes pest control technicians in that list. It's uh and stuff that you might be doing yourself and you don't realize you're doing it. So that's the video that comes tomorrow. That's a little bit longer video. It's like 12 minutes long. But um, anyway, you guys have a great day. Appreciate you standing all around with me for 25 minutes. Hear me gripe about U.S. Cellular and licensing. What? Oh, yeah. I had a guy that commented on one of my videos a while back because a lot of people don't know. I'm vegan, so I'm a hippie. But I had a guy comment on one of my videos and said that I need to do something about my cough because <laughs> I cough a lot. Um, I've got a chronic cough. Um, 
one of the reasons I cough so much is because I do so many videos. I talk for a living every day. So I talk to customers. I talk to my kids. I got three kids and, you know, talking to kids. And it, I only talk to my children. I only talk to them. Now, my voice may be elevated at times, but it's still talking. That's what we're going to call it. So I got three kids. I've got customers that I talk to every day. I've got videos that I put out for you guys almost every day. Uh, the month of May, I put out a video every single day, and I talked a lot. And I was really sick in May, and I couldn't figure it out. But when I quit doing my videos so often, I got better. So that's what's been going on with me and my voice. And the, yeah, that's what I need to do. I need to be like a preacher that sips on my tea all the time. But you guys have a great day, and we'll get off of here, rest of my voice, and I'll be seeing y'all later. Bye. Well, if I could, how do you do this? End.